to. Welcome again to Wickerson Studios. I took a week off. I had to turn 49 and do a bunch of things the 49-year-olds had to do. But uh, really, coming back to the GH Python script, uh, GH Python Node script that's being used in the Chinese text that I originally thought to start uh, learning Rhino Common with, uh, there's still plenty for me to learn when it comes to the functions that are within Rhino script. So I'm not going to be going into full detail and showing the Python scripts within here, but I did want to highlight where the uh, chapter three on mesh culminates. And you can see here I have a uh, uh, mesh sphere. Uh, I have a mesh uh, box. You see how that changes. And I have just a very simple mesh uh, plane. And with that, as we kind of simplify what's happening here, you can see you can gain a lot of control through not only your uh, uh, your count uh, when it comes to how many uh, you want within those meshes uh, but you can come in here and have a level count of where you want to splice that and open it I kept that fairly low to four because the script does start to slow down and then I have this extrusion ability of pulling it up uh, which is D for distance and that's right out of the script and because I'm I'm going from the script set of the text at this point to try and learn as much as possible I'll take you back to the beginning of it and uh, show you where it really goes in the time that we're uh, playing around with it. Uh, I will have a GH file connected to this, but it won't be sharing the uh, uh, the Python uh, scripts unless I'm utilizing them in a kind of new and creative way through Wickerson Studio. So let's just uh, leave this and I'll show you how it was kind of set up. Uh, there was many, many scripts uh, and how I ran it was uh, in sections. So really a subdivision of quad, uh, adding levels, adding holes, adding uh, holes with levels and adding holes with levels in the lift or the distance lift. Uh, simplifying that back down to what was happening before it was dealing with the triangular mesh so we can jump into here say uh, take this and put that on disable and see what it culminates to in the uh, in the triangle mesh uh, enabling that you can see you get a very cool structure to play with and I've done a little bit of playfulness in uh, making the uh, segments varied so I can get a more irregular shape as I kind of transition through three obviously is the number that's set out on that and then you have your levels that you can adjust for that form as well. And you have the uh, lift as you want to uh, make that smaller or uh, higher or lower, depending on the triangle you started with. And then prior to doing the triangular mesh, uh, uh, there's a section there on just lifting uh, a triangle mesh that's related to, let me take a look at this, enabling uh, kind of a flat mesh surface. So as we go into here, you can see uh, that's coming off of a mesh plane, which is similar to how we ended up. You can change the count here, which makes it simple for one. I think I went up to five, but once again, the script slows down. Uh, you've got your level adjustment to how many times you want to do that and split it. And then you have the uh, lift on that. And if you don't really understand what's going on, always put your numbers very, very small. So we bring that down to one. We bring this down to one split. You can see you're ending up with this geometry. You have a very simple lift on that. So very cool geometries, very simple, um, but you need the text to get through it. I'm going to disable that one and then I have a section here that I was playing with before which is where I left off in my last videos and that was ability to play with triangle meshes and come up with these uh, uh, kind of uh, I'm going to do the same for the uh, later sections like even though I'm very playful with these and kind of thinking about counting numbers on a grid uh, if I expose everything that's here and take it to preview on you'll see that I basically have this wonderful numbered system and the numbers are fairly small but I can iterate through, uh, and once I do a little change of this, and you'll see I have a few videos that play off of that. In the end, I will do a tutorial on my Patreon that will run through these early meshes as we went from the dead simple uh, beginning ones. I'll just take this off for a second and show you that it really starts from a simple understanding of a mesh vertices. And let's jump in here, and you're literally dealing with data, not, not geometry. It's only when I started creating the meshes farther on that I ended up uh, complicating these. So if I grab these and made those visible, uh, actually I have to make them enabled and visible, you'll see you're starting with these patterns and uh, controlling them. And because they're number based, you can start to pull these meshes. And a little post GH Python node allows me to build those up into different geometries and count different buildings. I'll enable that and you'll see, obviously uh, two are running here, uh, but if I change the numbers, what I did in a past video, as I dragged away my input numbers here, and as I alter those, you can see you can go from second to uh, three buildings if that comes up, uh, and you can change that. So I'm working in a triangle mesh as opposed to a square mesh. I think that's where I went for mesh create and then did a more triangular breakdown of it. And of course, all that's happening through the Python uh, nodes, and uh, 
you see how simple the scripts are in the earlier versions. But as I go into this, I'm going to hopefully jazz up the mesh triangles. Um, let's jump back out of here. Uh, go to disable. Uh, we'll go into something like this. And hopefully I can do the same jazz and funk and make it really exciting as we start to manipulate this on different geometries um, and be very playful with that. So I've got the count fairly small. Uh, this one I'm going to bring it back down to yeah, two or even one for that matter. Uh, something that I can kind of play off of and split. We'll split it just once. And you can see how simple that form actually is. I can build some pretty cool geometries that go backwards. And there's no negative there. It's actually just flat to the box. Um, but keep in mind, these are surfaces. They're not going the solids yet. And I was playing this in a Rhino uh, 2021 uh, into Revit, uh, doing Rhino inside. Uh, that just complicates the screen for what I'm actually doing. What I hope to do is that people get into these scripts, find out that these ones, uh, you can not only play within the Python script to complicate them, but you could actually do some post and pre uh, node scripts. So I'll be going into these meshes afterwards and breaking them down and considering what I can do in the traditional meth, uh, mesh tools. And of course, these don't rely on any plugins outside of possibly the Bifocals plugin uh, to locate and isolate uh, what's going on here. So if you start taking this kind of base knowledge and playing it into Lunchbox and into machine learning, you're going to complicate things extremely. And uh, like me, I just do this as a very playful thing for my mind, a conceptual exercise as an artist. But it's time to start considering where I might take some of these geometries into uh, different printings and different objects they might end up wanting to cast. Uh, Python's a very powerful node. The GH Python node's incredible. Uh, it does tend to point you towards scripting and coding that will teach you more about Rhino Common. You learn more about Rhino Common, you get into Rhino Developer, and you start making your own plugins. And maybe that's what you're uh, tending towards. I myself am just trying to memorize as much as I can about Python programming into Grasshopper and into Rhino. So thanks very much for watching. Seven minutes, and good to be back in touch with you at 49 years old. Hopefully, I got another good 10 years here. Hopefully, another three decades. Take care.